Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Razorback's robotic arms and do a little bit of modeling in that area. So right now, they're still really rough proxy objects, but we want to make them look a little bit more like finished machinery. So we may do a few booleans and just clean up some of the uh, some of the basic primitive shapes that we've got right now and make them look a little bit better. So let's get started. The first thing I'd want to do is hide everything. Well, everything not related to the arms. So we can hide the razor back and we can hide the instruments and it looks like the blades are being shown yep so we hide those this leaves us with just the blades showing and it really makes sense to work on one of these at a time the other one is just gonna get in my way so I'm gonna turn the symmetry off so we've got this symmetry group with one of these arms you know the main device of the Razorback and we have a bunch of these proxy objects that we put together. We're not really sure how they all fit. So one thing I know for sure is that I like the shape of this lower arm right here. Just so we get something a little bit more to f more fun to work with, let's give this a nice material. Sort of an industrial yellow. So we have this lower arm right here, and I really like how that looks. I also like how this main base unit looks. It does look like we need to potentially slide this edge down a little bit so it doesn't intersect. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the rough shape of these. So let's start off by merging this servo motor housing with the actual base unit. Now the way I built this, the base is currently the, the base currently has children, so that's going to make it tricky when I'm uh, modifying the, the polygons of this base because, you know, if I wanted to delete it or join two objects together, it would make it tricky, just because uh, it has children. So that's the first thing I'm going to fix. So I'm just going to group the base so we get a null object at that same spot. Then I'm going to ungroup, expand the object group, and I'm going to rename this group arm base null. Once we've done that, we can put the arm base in the arm base null and ungroup it. That way the arm base is simply another object, but if we wanted to rotate the whole arm base null, we still could. So that's useful. So now the arm base has been separated and we have this cylinder here that represents the proxy object for this uh, the servo motor. So the servo motor will likely be that size but I would like to blend these two objects together quite smoothly and I think if we just take that task on it could very well take us to the end of the screencast so let's start there. I'm going to hide the large arm and I'm going to hide actually Let's just hide the entire symmetry group and just force the arm base and the cylinder to be visible. So we can now see them really clearly. So the first thing we need to do is sort of prepare the geometry. So I know that we have this cylinder right here and we want to merge it with this arm base. But the best way to do that is going to be one step at a time. Let's start by making the arm base a bit more presentable. We can see we've got some end gons on the sides. These are going to be good for the initial modeling phase. So I actually have an edge here and I'm going to melt that edge. Now we can select some of these edges and start beveling them because um, nothing is as sharp as this thing is right now. So we want to smooth some of the edges out. So I'm going to use the rectangular selection tool to select some of these edges. We can't see them because they're on our view plane. But if we move to the camera view, we can see the edges I'm focusing on. And I'm just going to bevel them with a very simple zero subdivision bevel. All I aim to do is add some extra geometry like that. 
so we have a smoother object to work with. This is a nice way to make your geometry smoother without actually going in and adding a bunch of detail. And the cool thing is you can interactively edit it once you've done the bevel as long as you don't select anything else or use a different tool. So I think that looks pretty good. The next step is that we want to make all these hard edges softer. Just for a little bit of style, let's make this a wide beveled edge like that. So the next step is that we select literally every single edge we want to bevel. So every edge I'm going to be selecting here, I'm interested in smoothing out. For this arch of edges along the top, I can speed my selection process by using the path selection. So I can just select those edges and I can continue to use the path selection over here. Now, this is a messy process. Uh, it can take a while sometimes and it doesn't always go to plan at first. If you try this bevel and you get horrible results, don't give up. It just means you have to try again. Um, experience tells me we may need to select that edge, but let's see what happens if I don't. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bevel these edges. I just want to keep it as a simple bevel, so just one segment still. Oh, that looks really good. So uh, we selected all the edges we're interested in beveling, and we just beveled them, and it looks really good. I don't, I don't see any problem areas. Well, that's, that's not true. I see one or two problem areas, but they're quite easy to fix. So let's go ahead and fix them. If we deselect everything, you may be wondering to yourself, what sort of problem area does Jamie see? That object looks really good now. Well, there's a few triangles, and it's not that triangles are evil. These are just strangely placed. The best way to get rid of them is actually using the bevel tool again. What we do is we select these points. Notice these points are one of the vertices that form this triangle, and then we bevel them. The cool part is that it's sort of brings it out like a square and once that base edge down here is what we're looking for we can actually just move in here select these edges on the inside and melt them once we go in here and say okay this this is a giant and gone now because these edges here aren't there aren't they aren't real it's difficult to see with the yellow we've chosen but what we can do is we can basically just say remove and gons and it triangulates it quadrangulates it for us and you can see there now we have quads so that's a good start let's do the same thing over here and because the tools in cinema 4d remember your lost value if you go to bevel all you have to do is hit new transform and you get the exact same values that's useful okay so i got rid of those edges melted them and i can now remove those end gones. I usually use the keyboard shortcuts. That would be UE in rapid succession. So this this is starting to look pretty respectable as as far as a, you know, heavy sort of cast iron or maybe milled uh, milled aluminum sort of part. However, you do get some fong shading strangeness. Now, this dark edge is is happening because there's so little geometry. These kinks are happening because there are implied triangles. So let's take a look at those. These triangles here, one, two, and that's a quad, are basically implying that geometry exists there when it really doesn't. There's a couple ways we can handle this. The first way is we can take the knife tool, using it in line mode, visible only, and we can simply cut downwards. Once we've done that, we can then start to quadrangulate everything, as you can see. But I'm not going to do that just yet. The next thing we can do is we can actually select the polygons, in this case the n-gons, that are making up this entire surface. And if we track the surface, it runs all the way to the other side of the machine. And then we can do an extrude inner operation on it. Now, typically an extrude inner We'll simply take the edges, create a new ring of edges or a new loop of edges around the perimeter and create some new geometry. Let's see how that works. Just like that. If you use an extrude inner in a situation like this, what it's actually going to do is harden up your fong edges and it's going to get rid of those kinks. So now the surface looks a lot more rigid and it doesn't look as soft as this surface looks here. 
uh, we could just do an extrude inner operation right here as well to fix those. And uh, you know, it 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 helps the fong sh the fong smoothing uh, figure out exactly what it wants to look like. We can also do that operation again right here. It it may create a bit more geometry around these edges right here than we want, but let's try it anyway. Looks good. And what you have to watch out for is sometimes where strange angles meet, you get this odd looking geometry. Now, there's nothing to stop you from coming in here and correcting that manually, but just keep it in mind. Notice that the geometry here is a bit tilted and twisted, and it doesn't line up exactly how our human sort of interpolation thought it would. But as long as you keep your base geometry simple, it's usually uh, it's usually quite trivial to get in there and deal with it. So if we look at the base right here, we can see that we have a couple um, quadrangles that were sort of left behind from the extrude inner operation. And if we wanted to get rid of those, there's a few different ways. My favorite way is actually to get the axis of the object. So I'm in axis manipulation mode here, and you can see it lines up perfectly with the base, so that's good. If it didn't, you would need to rotate it into place. And then select all those polygons down there. So I've got to be careful of what I'm selecting. I want to only select these extra polygons that we created along the sides. So once we have those selected, we can actually just scale down to zero. You can hold shift for snapping. Once everything's scaled down to zero, just press delete. Uh, sometimes you may need to delete all the geometry down there and recreate it, because when you hit delete on those uh, polygons that were at the edges, you actually created holes. And so we can just fill the hole for now. And what we have here is a pretty respectable looking um, part. So I've got that edge I created earlier that I, I kind of like the look of. And we have these rounded uh, spots. And because this is mostly quads, it's going to be relatively easy to uh, subdivide it using hypernerbs if we wanted to. I think this Razorback is just going to be a polygonal model, but you never know. It's always good to prepare for these things. Now the next thing I'd like to do is start to cut apart this uh, cylinder. Now, this is currently made of two cylinders, but it really doesn't have to be. Both cylinders have eight segments, and we're probably going to want to up that to 12. And this cylinder down here is a separate object when it really doesn't have to be. I just made it that way because I was creating geometry really quickly. So... The best way to do that, I think, is to convert this to an editable object. Select all the faces and optimize standard stuff in C4D. And then, with all these faces selected, we can do an extrude inner. And then pull these faces out. And now we have that same geometry, but made of one object. So this is good, because our ultimate goal is to merge these two objects together with a nice smooth transition in between them. And, you know, we may put a seam in the geometry showing where the motor bolts on. In fact, let's do that right now. So what I'm thinking is that the edge of this won't be sharp. It would actually be quite blunt. So let's try a bevel with one edge, a convex bevel with one edge in between. I think that looks pretty good. So we'd have sort of a smooth uh, industrial part look at the end. We can get rid of those end gons. We don't need them. And if we look from the side, this part of the machine right here is probably going to be the part that the motor actually bolts to. The motor is probably this short stubby bit. So if we use the knife tool in loop mode, we can basically cut it right there. And then we can create a bit of a gap where the motor bolts to the mount. And the way I'd like to do that is we just create a tiny little gap like that, an extra ring of uh, polygons, well, an extra loop. We select the loop, and then we just do an extrude. Uh, it looks like our extrudes are creating caps. We don't want that. So let's do that over just so you guys can see it. We do an extrude. Normally, it'll extrude out. 
but what we actually want is to extrude inwards to create that gap and all that's going to do is create that gap in the geometry that's going to make it look like part A is bolted to part B somehow and so that's pretty good this is actually going to help us when we do our boolean so let's get to that now before booleaning the uh, base and the cylinder let's call this the motor mount the motor mount together we're going to want to smooth any edges on the motor mount that we want to smooth we want to do that before we don't want to wait until after to do that because otherwise we're going to have two different sets of edges to clean up what I mean by that is let's say on this motor we wanted most of the parts you know because they're cast or milled to have a uh, zero subdivision you know sort of a rounding like that that looks good we want to do that before trying to join the objects that's all I'm saying and we're also looking at this part right here this is not ideal we actually want to have a bit of a gap between there so what I'll do is I will just uh, move the cylinder outwards until that's no longer an issue if we switch to edges mode we can see when it becomes an issue no more so we I, I really want to stress that we we want a clean edge here we don't want those two things overlapping at all and since this is largely cosmetic we can we can do things like that it doesn't really matter okay so let's see if we rotate this a bit more we get those edges to line up more closely there that's also a good thing because it means our geometry is going to be more predictable right here and see we've had to pull it out a little bit but it's okay it's good so I'm just gonna save the file I always like to save before doing a scary boolean operation and we have our two objects now uh, let's create a boolean modifier or boolean object not really sure what you would call it I guess it's an object and a modifier and then we say arm base and cylinder now the default is a subtract b so cylinder subtract arm base or arm base subtract cylinder and we get that and we can see we're, get, we're about to create a lot more geometry but that's okay what we're gonna do is change the boolean from subtract to union the it, it doesn't look like much has happened but if we go to the inside of the object we can see exactly what's happening we are actually joining the two objects together and creating this contiguous this sort of continuous surface between the two objects and you know these points here are lining up really evenly that's going to be easy to clean up uh, all these other points here are lining up well and we have a bunch of geometry here we'll have to take care of that and this is a good time to consider okay what geometry am I going to have to clean up and where can I add geometry so I don't have to clean up as much what I mean by that is that if we look at the base of the arm we have all these triangles striping all the way down here to this point we can actually prevent that from being such a big deal by adding some more geometry to this so if we were to use our knife tool in line mode um, uncheck visible only so it cuts anything we tell it to and then we add a cut right below where the boolean starts sort of parallel down to there we've actually isolated the area where this mess is gonna happen and it also lets us see that you know what we may need some more geometry coming down this way so I'm gonna turn visible only back on so we don't cut things that we can't see and then I'm gonna make a couple more cuts coming down this way maybe three and these are gonna be useful in helping us terminate the result of our boolean uh, just so that they don't seem like pointless geometry I'm just gonna move the points down a little bit so that they have a bit of a shape and we see we also have this lower bit of edges here this might be a good time to bring those over like that it's all about keeping your geometry clean predictable and we can see here that we're gonna have some extra geometry right here it might be a good idea to select these parts of the object 
this part that comes all the way around. First thing we do is remove the end gons. We can deselect those quadrangles up there. And then using the knife tool in path mode, we can cut along this path of polygons. And again, I'm, I'm hoping that this gives us more geometry to work with so that we have to do less cleanup. Now again, because we've added geometry here that doesn't really have a purpose, it's always a good idea to, or at least in my experience, I think it's a good idea to select those edges and just scale them up or just, well, we can't do that right now because they don't go right around, but uh, you get you get what I'm saying. These, these edges, uh, when you add edges that sort of just interrupt the flow but they don't change the shape of the geometry I feel like it's always kind of strange there's no hard rule against it I just don't like doing it very much so you know we're we're moving along with our boolean don't want to get too distracted now once we're setting up this boolean we say high quality create single object hide new edges eh, let's let's leave them shown and then we can just hit the C key and we get new geometry. First thing, let's jump in and delete all of the edges that just don't need to be there. These, those, and most importantly these right there. Those are the first set of edges I think we, we see immediately that we know we can get rid of. So I'm going to melt them and they go away. We then see that the boolean tried to create some geometry here, and I don't mind that. Let's let's help it out. So I'm going to go to the line tool, visible only, and I'm just going to pick up where it left off and keep cutting. And we continue down to here. We meet it down there. We can also see that in areas like this, we have edges that just don't do anything. So we can just use the weld tool and get rid of those. We have some more edges here that shouldn't really be there. We can melt those. And in point mode, we just continue to clean things up. The idea is that any geometry we can get rid of without changing the fundamental shape that we've got is, is a good, is good thing. So I'm just going to select these edges, melt them, and then we can see, okay, how can we, well, let's fix this corner first. It looks like all these edges really want to just go down to that one point. And here's an interesting thing. We're super close to where the seam is, but we have an extra line of polygons. We don't have it on this side, but we have it up here. This is a, this is a clear opportunity to just get rid of them. What I usually do in a situation like this is I take the edge that's closer to the, uh, in this case, the base, and you collapse everything to that edge. So we can just select those and keep collapsing everything down to the base like that. We can get rid of that funky funk shading later. So we have this uh, this spot right here where everything terminates. And we have a few extra edges. Now, are they extra? I'm not really sure. But we can figure out if they're extra by starting to quadrangulate things. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. Using the line tool, we can start by saying, okay, that's a quad, which means everything down here would just need to be one quad and it would kind of work. So let's try that. I just have to select all these points. So if we merged all of those into one point, yeah, that, that actually works pretty well. So let's leave it like that. And then and then we see these sorts of strange shapes. So again, we just try to quadrangulate them. Can it be quadrangulated? So if that's a quad, then that's one. And then we can bring that down. And there, everything's quads. Um, they're strangely shaped. And I've, I've actually had a YouTube viewer call me out for that. And... I'm sorry, I'm doing it again. Um, it's it it is strange shaped geometry. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe what we needed to do would be instead of quad quadrangulating it that way, we bring it right across like that, 
and then like that. That's actually a little bit better, I think. And we just continue with the process. Well, before we start quadrangulating everything, we can't forget that there's still one more boolean we need to do. Sorry, not one more boolean, one more operation. We need to smooth the transition between these two. So let's just continue to clean things up a little bit. So I'm just going to select these edges. These are edges we're seeing and they just don't belong. Just get rid of them. Um, this is a bit of a stretch, but I'm going to say let's get rid of this edge as well. It's just too close to this to this uh, seam that we're creating. So what I'm actually doing is I'm trying to isolate this path around our object that we can use to uh, to do another bevel operation. And again, you know, we see we see some geometry here that maybe um, maybe is sort of extra. I'm just trying to clean up this line as it goes around the object. So select all these points, merge them into one. This is an extra edge. Let's get rid of that. We have two points down here and an edge, so let's just merge those together. And this is this is this is one of the ways that booleans get people in trouble. They don't come back and clean up all this mess. And this is mess. There's there's no other way to say it. A lot of this geometry happened because it simply had to. We asked Cinema 4D to do a boolean, and it said, "All right, um, if that's what you want me to do, the geometry is going to be messy, but I'll do my best." And uh, this is what it came up with. So, and you know, you can prep the geometry better, and you'll get a cleaner result. But I don't want to take too much time out of the screencast just sitting here prepping geometry. So I want to get moving as well. So we have this uh, shape now. And we know we're done cleaning up when we feel we can comfortably say, okay, let's uh, do our path selection and let's just select the line where these two intersect. Now, the Boolean operation has, a, I believe it has an option to create fong breaks at the intersection, which you can then select. But those would be pretty messy based on the geometry we just cleaned up. So it's often easier just to go through and do this by hand. And once we're done selecting this loop, if we go to this mode, we can really clearly see the intersection. And we can see that there's no crazy edges anywhere near the geometry we have selected. So this is going to be a pretty good operation once we do it. And all we need to do now is do a bevel. Now, because of the strange nature and the strange shape of this bevel, I'm actually going to do a subdivision in it. So I expect to have uh, two strips of polygons, three edges, one on either side and one in the middle, like that. And we can now do our bevel. It looks pretty good. But I knew we'd run into issues here because these are so close. Um, we can manually clean this up. So I'm not too worried about it. But you just want to take a quick once over and look at everything around the edges. And because we did so, so much cleanup the first time around, there's hardly anything for us to clean up now. And that's really good. So once we've done that, first thing I like to do is get rid of those end gons because these are all end gons. So I'm just going to use my loop selection. It selects mostly <laughs> what the bevel created. And uh, I also selected this giant end gon. And then we can just basically say UE and it removes them. And what we have now is a really nice smooth transition. And if we zoom back out to here, we can see that our objects look morphed pretty well. We do have this problem spot. Now, I knew this would happen because these edges are so close together. So what we can do in this case is try to uh, try, just try to move the edges around so that they don't get in each other's way. So we can move the beveled edge in a little bit and then move this edge closer to his neighbor and just sort of evenly distribute it and we get that. So that's why it was so important that we left that gap because if the cylinder had actually intersected these beveled edges it would have been really difficult to fix. Um, it looks like that's the only fixing we need to do. Everything else is triangulation and quadrangulation. So let's, let's tackle that next. Also because we made this cut and sort of isolated this motor part out here 
uh, the damage of these triangles is sort of isolated to just a few of the faces. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's start quadrangulating. I've spoken in my videos before the, about the importance of quadrangulating and about the fact that it's it's really not that important. It depends on your workflow. If your workflow demands it, well, it just has to be done. But if not, you might be able to get away with just you know, leaving your triangles in your model as long as it doesn't look bad. I'm going to come back to those because I have an idea for them. So I often start where I can find an edge. So this is clearly a nicely shaped quadrangle right here. So we just do a quad. And then what we're left with is we can either do a long skinny quad like that or we can, I guess, do a, a pair of quads like that. It, it really depends and in these tight corners you got to get creative so let's try this maybe we can do a quad like that that's actually a lot better so what we've done is instead of going with the flow we've actually split this edge and we've created our own our own quadrangle and of course it leaves us with a triangle here I know we can just get rid of that and what this is likely going to force us to do is to have an um, sort of a an intermediate point, uh, an intermediate edge of geometry coming all around here, which isn't going to be a necessarily bad thing. So let's let's plan for that. It's going to be like that pretty much all around. So we have a really nice case for quads right here. And let's be careful at this spot. If we bring it down here, that's a triangle and a five-sided if we bring it diagonally across we do get our two quads so let's stick with that geometry isn't perfect but it'll do and we just continue with the quadrangulation that's a really good quad there um, this is a weird spot but we can smooth it out later okay so that's sets us up for a nice quad there and a nice quad right there another one here yeah these are these are all naturally quads which is nice but I'm gonna use the brush tool to smooth these points out this is an interesting technique I use where you can just select a bunch of points that are on the same plane and then you can use the brush tool that's M C and use it in smooth mode at a low strength and well, maybe my strength needs to be higher for this instance, 10%. And you can sort of just move these points around using the smooth tool. And because they all started out on the same plane, they're going to all gravitate towards their most uh, sort of equidistant configuration. You can always come in here and help them out like that. And what we have so far is just a whole lot of quads. So this is good. If we move up to the, let's move around to this side. So we got as far as right here. And if we continue, we see, ah, got some interesting stuff here. We have the opportunity to bring this edge around, but we already have geometry connecting there. So we don't need to. What we can do is melt all of these edges and see how this quadrangulates. We're not going to want to try to pull this guy up because it's it's it never ends well when you try to quadrangulate um, when you try to force a quad into a skinny area like that. So maybe we can actually start bringing quads around like this and if we brought that up top that would give us a quad below and let's see a lot of these times I just I just experiment and I just see what works so we can we're essentially routing the edges around the corner so if I move these points around so we can see a little bit better what we're doing Again, this is probably not ideal geometry distribution, but it works okay for what we're doing. And then we have this bunch of edges coming around the corner. Probably connect those right across. Connect this up to there. 
We just want to make sure we're making quads, we're making friendly geometry. Wow, that worked out well. And we can just push these points around. I'm using the slide tool. It's a good idea to use the slide tool for stuff like this because it, it keeps everything on the plane. You don't run the risk of pushing your points into the geometry, at least not very far, because everything sort of stays to the surface. Cool, so that, that looks nice and clean. Up top here, I see no problems. All I see is beautiful square geometry. And then we have this spot here that we didn't want to tackle earlier. Let's try this. What if we selected this entire loop of edges right around? Oh, we forgot about this. Okay, yeah, this is this is a really good opportunity. So let's try this. If we go with the idea that we have similar geometry there and there, we can figure out how we want it to quadrangulate. This is going to be a tricky spot no matter how we do it. Let's try this. Let's make a triangle there, but it's not going to be a triangle for long because we're going to cut it like that. And what happens when we do that is we actually turn it from a triangle into a quad because we make it turn the corner. And oftentimes when you do a drastic cut like that and move it along a curved surface, you may find you need to push it up. In this situation, I think it's okay. And that is slowing down. Okay. So in this situation, I think it's okay. And we can just resume cutting these edges. And what do we get here? We get a quadrangle very nicely. And then we get something we can divide into a quad pretty easily there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come around the side of the cylinder using this strip. And we're going to hope that we can meet up corresponding edges on this side. And huh, that worked out really well. So that worked out amazingly well. And that everything just met up the way it's supposed to be. Um, so what I'm actually going to do here is straighten out these edges. I have a little trick for this. Right now, if I select these edges, they're wobbly. They're not on a straight line. Also, we don't really have an axis that's aligned with them to squash them. But what we can do is use the slide tool. Well, actually, this is a plugin that I use. Now that I mention it, it's, it's a Kayama slide. And what you can do is you can slide it all the way to the edge and then slide it back and it straightens it out. Uh, Kayama slide basically enables you to um, uh, slide a, a collection of edges um, where I don't believe the uh, built-in Cinema 42 lets you do a selection of edges. So I can use Kayama slide again, slide it all the way to straight edge and then you bring it back out and it straightens it up and now we have a nice uniform grid it's good stuff all right so at the end of this we have something that's nice and smooth where we wanted it to be smooth and nice and sharp where we don't want it to be well it's smooth where we wanted it to be smooth and it's sharp ish where we wanted it to be sharp. It looks like we forgot these polys here. Let's deal with these really quickly. So I'm just going to select those and let's see. We can probably quadrangulate that edge like that. That works. And then bring this over. And there we go. Those are those are all quads. It's good stuff. Um the only other improvements I say we could make is maybe using the extrude inner technique again. So if we go around and just sort of carefully select everything there, we can, I guess we can also do the same thing for right here.
let's not do it for this part. We can basically do an extrude inner. And it'll stiffen up those edges for us. Notice though that we've created some uh, scary looking geometry here. Uh, it's just because this flipped over. So all we need to do is manually use the slide tool. Slide these edges around until they're no longer laying on top of each other. And we can do the same thing down here. And what we're left with is a pretty good looking arm. I don't like this fong shading that I'm getting here. I'm wondering if there's an error on the inside of the object. No, yeah, it looks fine. Just looks like this is... Maybe we have reversed normals. Nope. Looks like they're all pointing in the same direction. Ah, oh, looks like I found a triangle. Oh, and this is going to be one of those difficult triangles where it's the only triangle left. There's no other triangles around to terminate it into. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna triangulate that and leave it alone for now. We can get back to that if we really want to. Uh, perhaps we can. Maybe we actually need to split this. If I select these edges and then bevel them out, that fixes the fong issue. Well, kind of, not really. I think the fong issue is mainly being caused because of this. This is such a drastic dive over the cliff for this piece of geometry. I think the only way we're really going to be able to clean this up is by doing an extrude inner like that. And so if we go back and look at it now, it's a lot sharper. Or, you know, just just to get the artistic freedom ideas, um, if we were to go to point mode and select all of the points associated with this, we can then use the brush tool and smooth them out. This is not what we had planned, but it just gives you an idea of how you can sort of um, change your idea along the way. And we could just have it smoothly blend in like that. I don't particularly like how that looks, so I'm going to put it back. But yeah, so we have a, we have a pretty good representation of this object now. I think I'm going to do the extrude inner technique right here just to make sure that this uh, this mount for the motor looks really really rigid so we can just do an extrude inner just like that looks a lot harder And let's do it down here. And I'm actually going to select these edges right here. And using Kayama Slide, I'll push it up a little bit. Actually, no. It's going to ruin the flow of the geometry. All right. So, you know, there's a couple of things we need to take care of. For instance, um, there's these leftover uh, sort of mitered edges from when we did the uh, extrude inner. Should have that on that side. So we can just scale that down to zero, delete, and then refill the hole. You know, we can go in and we can make we can make it quadrangles everywhere. Uh, but this, you know, I hope I hope this was a good demo of how you can boolean two really complicated objects together and still get that nice smooth transition. And again, if this transition isn't smooth enough for you, you can always select the offending points. So I'm going to select all these points right here. 
and use the brush tool on it. I'm just going to reduce the radius to one inch. And we can sort of just smooth it out a little bit. And if we move back, we can see that it's sort of is a gentler transition. All right, so now we can rename this object base. And we unhide the rest of the arm. We can see that this is the first in a few objects that are going to make this look like a legitimate robotic arm. It's a lot smoother. And we just need to go up the uh, hierarchy of the rest of the arms and make them look as polished as this one looks. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed it. And see ya.